What is the sun? The sun is what? Atman, the supreme power. It's the literally it's the it's the power that's the unembodied power. It's really interesting to to think of it this way. In numerology, you know, the sun is one, right? It's the one. And we tend to think one like this, one. But this isn't really one. This is two. To produce form, you need duality. This is why this is related to the moon. The body and all forms come from the moon. The sun and the moon together create life. Literally, it's not just poetry or some abstract concept. The sun and the moon create life. It took them four and a half billion years to create life. For um, actually nine tenths of that time, there was nothing here. Really, hardly nothing. A couple, you know, single-celled or you know, organisms in the ocean, and then all of a sudden. Cambrian explosion and life went crazy. This is literally nine tenths of the time the sun and the moon were there for three, for more than three billion years. There was literally like nothing here. I mean, we can't imagine that length of time. I mean, even 500 million years is pretty crazy for us to try to imagine, but it's only been the last 500 million years that we've had life on Earth, which is one, one tenth of the time. So the point being, it took a long time for this to happen. This didn't just happen overnight. That's why our body is so resilient and there's so much redundant like genius built into all of our cells because it took a long time to make this incredible you know, organism. But consciousness was still there before there were any forms. So the one of the sun is like there's only one of them. It's like that. There's only one of them. Not a bunch of creatures, but the oneness that we're trying to return to is the sun. And so the sun is that power within us, that like vitality and that pure like Shiva energy that, you know, the stories of Shiva is there and he's content whether there's creation or not, whether there's, you know, whatever. Shiva's fine, just like the sun was fine even though there was no world. The sun was fine and he was sitting there and he wasn't going anywhere. And the moons, you know, like the stories of Shiva and Parvati play this out. You know, Parvati waited and waited and waited and waited for billions and billions of years, and then finally Shiva said, "Okay, here, let's let's populate the earth and have children and have babies." So that's what this story really, really is about. Shiva's like, "Whatever, you want to go do your tapas and your penance, so one day we can have children and there can be all this. Go right ahead." And then she had to do it a long time, just like the moon, billions of years for the moon going around the earth and all the other planets, and then finally, after all of that time. What happened is the sun and the moon worked into the sacred vibration with the earth based on the number 108. Do you know this? Do you know this? I heard it from you. I okay. Video. <laughs> so there's 108. So the vibration is that literally, f first thing to realize is that the moon is slipping out of its orbit like a couple inches, about a half an inch every year. And, it's t and so it's been in this place of 108 resonance with the sun. When we talk about harmonic resonance and all, this is the ultimate harmonic resonance. And it's the reason 108 is really a thing. We can say it's on the mala beads and all, but the reason is because there's 108 suns between us and the sun and 108 moons between us and the moon. This is the harmonic resonance. It wasn't always like that. For instance, like even a couple hundred thousand years ago, there was like 109 between us and the moon. The moon has got, or I'm sorry, there, it was like 107. The moon was closer to the earth. The moon, because the moon came out of the earth, and then it's, and it took a long time for the moon to move to the point to where it's like, boom, now is 108 congruence. So the distance between the sun and the moon is 108. I'm, for, I'm sorry, from the sun and the earth, 108 suns between us and the sun, 108 moons between us and the moon. And the moon is slipping out of its orbit. And the first thing is like, when's it going to happen? Don't worry, a couple hundred thousand years. But we're, the last hundred thousand years or so, which is really of recorded human history, we, dis we started to develop consciousness, which is what the moon is. Brain, consciousness, more complex life forms that are able to think and have karma and all that came from the moon working into that vibration. And it's working out of it now slowly, but it's right in that, you know, I don't know, 100,000 year sweet spot is where we are. So this is how the sun and the moon c literally create life. So when scientists say we have absolutely no relationship to the heavens, it's just ridiculously laughable. Our whole life comes from that. I mean, if the sun were to blow up, that would be the end of it. But yet, how did it get there? How do we know when it's going to stop shining? Any of it. It's the same way if the moon flew out of its orbit. We're totally dependent on 
this on this on this universe. So the sun is the one without a second, as it says, right? There's only one, and we're all it. And because we don't know that, we have the illusion of separateness. Oh, there's you, there's me. This is duality, which comes from the sun and the moon together. So this is two, but the one without the second is the sun. And in us, that's what we're trying to find when we come here. We're always trying to measure whether or not our worldly experiences, which is through the ascendant, this false self, it's related to the, it's, it's produced by the ascendant, you right, because that's what our body is. When we're placed on the wheel of time, we incarnate this false se um, self measured against the, our true self, which is the sun. And the thing that's doing that is the moon. That's what the moon is. The moon is number two. It's the duality. And it's always comparing our limited worldly experiences with our unembodied non-localized true self saying is this God does this feel like God <laughs> one way or another that's what we're doing with how we feel that our emotions and all are some kind of reference to how close does this feel like my authentic self this is what the moon does so the moon is always trying to dissolve the experiences the separate life of duality that I like this I don't like this this feels good this doesn't he likes me she doesn't blah 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 uh, that's going on through our life in the world, the moon is where we're trying to integrate all of that. So the moon is how we feel, how we receive, feel, and integrate experiences as an embodied being. Does that make sense? So with the sun, when what would you think would happen when Rahu affects the sun? So first of all, what is, what, what, is the, what is the nature of Rahu? I should ask these questions first. What is Rahu going to do when he influences anything? What does Rahu do? Confusion. Huh? Confusion. Yeah, but so does Ketu. Let's try to distinguish between the two. Huh? Amplify the effect. Amplify the effect. So does Ketu. In what way? How does Rahu amplify different than Ketu? Rahu must experience. Okay, right.